Well, thank you, Reggie, and thank God for you. It's so easy to say it can't happen here. This is America. When our rights aren't based on God, the author of rights, anything can happen here. I said a minute ago I'm so grateful and I remain so grateful that we have so many different communities of faith, so many different denominations coming together today. Our next speaker is Gary Lynn Wagner. He's the pastor of the Reformed Heritage Church in Los Gatos. You may have also heard him on the radio. Every weekday since 1998, half hour, Monday through Friday at 8.30, his show, Abounding Grace, appears on KFAX, 1100 AM. He's here to join us today. Please welcome Gary Wagner. It's an incredible honor to be here with all of you today. But I, as, as I hope all of you, are tired of being stepped on. I'm tired of being my rights being stepped on, my liberty being stepped on, my constitution and my Christian faith and heritage. I've had enough. Have you? I've had enough of a Congress that appears to be concerned with feathering its own nest and, ex and expanded its own power over us. I've had enough of a federal system of courts that's not dedicated to interpreting the Constitution according to the original tent of our founding fathers. And I am especially tired and have especially had enough of a president who is dedicated to a socialistic, anti-Christian agenda that is destroying us. We have a federal government that is dedicated to change in America from everything she was created to be, a God-centered society, into a socialist, fascist state, where the federal government owns our property and our businesses and tells the church, you're okay, as long as you don't try and interfere with the job of governing. I have been involved in politics for a number of years. And I have not seen such an attack on Christianity and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ as I have over the past few years. We are rapidly being relegated to second-class citizens. Why? Because the church has sold its soul like Esau for a pot of porridge, ease and affluence. Because the church has quietly paraded itself to the, be forced to the back of the bus. And I don't know about you, but I'm tired of giving in. Yeah. For years now, we have been retreating behind the doors of our emasculated churches, while the messianic-like master state and wimpy church leaders tell us we have no business in the political arena. And we believe them. And we keep our mouths shut. And evil triumphs everywhere. Oh yes, we give out a whimper every January against Roe versus Wade, a court decision which has led to the greatest genocide the world has ever seen. And every election year somewhere across the country, we yell our opposition against some same-sex marriage. And now we're upset with the feds telling the church that churches and Christian institutions have to supply insurance for their employees to cover the cost of contraception and even more killing of babies. And these issues are good for us to decry. But our culture is becoming more and more immoral every day because the church has abandoned every area of society to man and the religion of humanism. Brothers and sisters, I ask you, why did our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ die on the cruel cross of Calvary? Why did our great and loving God shed his precious blood? Was it so that you and I might merely have forgiveness of our sins and fly to heaven on a flowery bed of ease while his created order is dominated by the powers of darkness? Christ brought us out of the realm of darkness and placed us in the realm of light. And what does light do to the darkness? 
it eliminates it. It eliminates it by the preaching and the teaching and the applying of the truth of God's Word to our lives. When Christ brought you into the realm of His light, He placed within you His Holy Spirit. And greater is He that is in you than he that is in the world. Salvation, beloved, is a lot more comprehensive and a lot bigger than just our individual redemption. Jesus didn't come to sacrifice himself simply so we could feel all warm and fuzzy on the inside and walk with him and talk with him in the garden all alone. Through the death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ, Satan was crushed, and we were empowered as warriors to march against the gates of hell, which Jesus said cannot, cannot prevail against a faithful church. He has clothed you in his armor, and he has given you marching orders in Matthew 28, 18 through 20. He says, all power, all power is given to me. A little power, some power, all power is given to me in heaven and on earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, not just individuals, but all nations across the world, baptizing them, bringing every aspect of the culture into the kingdom of God, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always to the end of the world. Beloved, we are called to teach all nations to observe all things whatsoever God has commanded us to do. We are to teach and strive to impose God's law word over every area of our culture. Beloved, who knows better how to rule God's creation, man himself or God the creator of all things? God's word speaks to every area of life. It is his blueprint for how we are to live our lives for our greatest freedom. It is the blueprint for the family, for marriage, for politics, for government, for education, for economics, for foreign policy, for warfare, for welfare, for every human relationship. If we are to be free indeed, we must bow the knee to Christ alone and not the state. It is only as we are indefatigable in bringing every area of life to our Lord Jesus Christ that we will be truly free again. And I leave you with this, beloved. If God be for us, who can be against us? Amen. May God bless you all.